All right, all right, all right. We are back here at Song of the Day, coming to you from whereabouts, as usual, the Rock Cave. I'm your host, Mark Pierce. Today is Wednesday. What do we got going on on Wednesday? Well, either you love Wednesdays or you hate them here at Song of the Day because we're still churning out some artists that maybe you never heard of or ones that you've heard of that you don't know any of their songs or just uh, eventually maybe songs from bands that you know already that you haven't heard before. We're getting down there. There's only a few bands left on the list that actually I would say I have a lot of their material. After that, I've got a ton of material that'll be like one or two songs from an artist that I just really like, even if I don't know much about the rest of their stuff. So, without further ado, what's today's serving? Well, today, we're going with a band that I really like a lot. So much so, I have a ton of their CDs still to this day, and this isn't even all of them. There's some more of them floating around here. And that band is... Gene Loves Jezebel. Anyone remember Gene Loves Jezebel? You might know a couple of their songs. I really like these guys. Uh, anyway, who are they? A band formed in London in the early 80s, around 81 or so, by identical twin brothers, Jay and Michael Astin. Yep, identical brothers. They both sing, too, on their albums, so you can never really know who's singing. Uh, so, they're kind of this band in London. They've they got this funky hair. They're punk. They're definitely punk. And they're, like, post-punk punk stuff. They're hanging out in bars where, like, the Cure hang out and stuff like that. But uh, They put out their first record in 83 called Promise. That went to number 8 on the UK uh, indie charts. Uh, but... All in all, they they didn't really get a ton of traction in the UK. They actually picked up more in the United States, uh, which we'll talk about. But uh, yeah, so they were putting out these records that were guitar-driven, kind of punk, post-punk, just good stuff, right? Uh, so their name came from, I don't, they didn't really say how they came up with this, but Gene Vincent was a singer in the 1950s, and he had a song called Jezebel, and they just called themselves Gene Loves Jezebel. I'm not sure why. Uh, 1985, they uh, put out another record, Immigrant, um, the, and they toured the United States. And that's when uh, College Radio picks them up uh, and starts playing. K-Rock starts kind of picking up on them, and, and they start picking up, again, some traction. And, the, and that 85 album, Immigrant, um, the band really felt like they were kind of coming into their own and, and really excited about what direction they were going in. Then one of their members has a mental breakdown and they replace uh, the guitarist with a Gen X former guitarist uh, who would go on to tour with the cult later. But this is a key moment in the band, uh, in their demise, which we'll talk about. Uh, and in 86, they change labels. They go to Geffen or subsidiary of Geffen, gets them more exposure they're changing their music style. They're picking up, getting a little pick, pick up on MTV. And then 1986, they put out Discover. Uh, sorry, uh, they put out yeah Discover for that was their first one for uh, Geffen, um, and that had some hits on it. It had Desire. Um, it had uh, was that just a Discover Desire, uh, uh, and it had Heartache. Love that song, Heartache. Desire was on a soundtrack. That's when I probably when I first heard them. Uh, when PLR is probably playing that song, but that was on a soundtrack to the movie She's Having a Baby. Great soundtrack. I was thinking about doing a soundtrack session. Uh, we'll start do a special on Saturdays called Soundtrack Saturdays. We'll see if I do that or not. But this is a great soundtrack. Great movie. Kevin Bacon in this movie. I don't know if you ever saw this movie. It was good. Uh, but that's where I heard that song. Um, the song Desire. Uh, I, just their vocals are really cool. I like. I, I just like this band. Um, but their, their music started going from punk to more dance kind of stuff. And they go through drummers like Spinal Tap. They just kind of explode into green globules, right? They get to their fifth drummer, who's the drummer, uh, one of the drummers or the drummer from the band Thompson Twins. 
And in 88, they put out the album House of Dolls. That, that has some great songs on it. That has two great songs, uh, 20 kilohertz and Suspicion, and it has one song that's annoying, which is Motion of Love, which is the song that is actually the one that kills this band. But uh, you might know that song, Motion of Love. That's their most poppy song. So that album, House of Dolls, pretty much ruins the band. They're already kind of, the twins are kind of f growing apart. They don't, they don't like the direction. One, they got this new, they got a, a drummer that's from pop. They got a, a guitarist that's from pop music. Their, their music is starting to sound more pop. And the brothers don't agree on that. So basically, um, Jay leaves the band in the middle of that House of Dolls stuff. And Michael keeps the Gene Loves Jezebel name and puts out um, a few more albums. He puts out Kiss of Life, which has that song Jealous. That went to number one in the United States on the modern rock charts. And then they put out, he put out Heavenly Bodies in 92. Um, <clears throat> then the lawsuits come. They file lawsuits over the name. Uh, at one point, that one with brother withdraws. They both keep the name. So then you got, uh, um, you got Michael's, Michael Aston's Gene Loves Jezebel touring in the United States. You got Jay Aston's Gene Loves Jezebel touring in the UK and everywhere else. And they did that for a long time. I mean, they would just each have their own version of Gene Loves Jezebel. They're twin brothers. They're identical. They have the same voice. You're basically seeing the same band every time. Uh, they're still they're still filing lawsuits. I mean, in 2019, they still one of them still sued for like breaking the contract and touring somewhere where they weren't supposed to tour. I mean, it's just crazy, right? Uh, so in all, they put out 17 albums with this moniker. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of music, right? For me, uh, some great songs. You got Jealous, which was the hit. Desire. You got 20 kilohertz, love 20 kilohertz. Motion of Love, Heartache, love the song Heartache. Uh, Josephina, Upstairs, Kiss of Life, Gorgeous. Uh, a White Horse, not to be confused with Wild Horse, also a favorite of mine. Uh, that's all good stuff. I mean, the, 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 that's their story. Um, the, you can kind of see where they went from punk to pop, but uh, I really like the, all those songs right there. So they are a favorite band of mine. I don't know what you're going to think. I'm almost at eight minutes on Gene Loves Jezebel, but uh, I do dig them. So what are we doing for song of the day? Well, as usual, I'm going to post a ton of stuff. But if I had to pick one song, it's got to be 12, 20 kilohertz. That's the one that will be the top uh, as far as that's concerned. But some other stuff, see what you think. Definitely guitar driven. Their voices are very unique. Tell me if you know this band. Tell me if you remember this band. Tell me if you like this stuff. As usual, just give me the feedback. Love to hear here. But today, Wednesday, we got Gene Loves Jezebel. Enjoy your Wednesday. And as usual... We'll see you on the flip side.